I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this interview and um, sharing your information with our audience about living more of a healthy and holistic lifestyle. Oh, thank you for asking me. It's my pleasure. This has become a passion for me. And uh, I, I guess one of the things people wonder about is how I got into this in the first place. Mm -hmm. So when I was two, my pediatrician gave me an overdose of penicillin, which left me on the verge of death in the hospital. And they performed all kinds of things, spinal taps on my backbone and had many, many transfusions. And they told my parents I was going to die. But as you can see, I did pull through, but I was left with a severe case of acute anemia. So growing up, I started craving anything that would give me energy. And so sugar became my food of choice. And growing up back in the 50s and 50s and 60s, a lot of the food on the market at the time and the food that my mother and my parents were told to buy were like fortified white refined types of foods. And so even the white refined types of foods, your body reads like pure sugar and has to pull nutrients from it in order to process it. So by high school, I was told by my eye doctor that I was going blind and that he didn't see any way to stop it. And I don't know if they put two and two together back then, but I was also told I was pre-diabetic. So I, I know that uh, macular degeneration is a big problem with people with diabetes. So I, in my own opinion, think that those were combined and my doctors just weren't communicating with each other. At that time, my doctor told me that the synthetic sweeteners were a better choice for me. So sugar-free Dr. Pepper became my food of choice as I headed off to college and uh, moved to London and studied theater and Cordon Bleu. And as I continued uh, through my college years, my father had a heart attack. So I'm from Texas. And I grew up on a lot of meat-based foods and southern fried foods. And so, you know, there was always a large chunk of meat in, in the middle of our dining table. And being acute anemic and still struggling with that, and one of the things I did all the time was I chewed on ice chips. Mm -hmm. And a real indication that someone has... A severe iron deficiency as they chew on ice and anyway as I as I started having these um, artificial sweeteners and started drinking these kinds of sodas and I was still eating what was kind of mainstream Americanized type of food white refined breads and white refined types of things like pasta and rice and then vegetables but everybody was telling me since I was acute anemic that I needed to eat lots of meat and have lots of liver. Well, when my dad had a heart attack when I was in college, he survived. I had also lost previous relatives to heart disease. And so I got into my 20s and I got married and I got pregnant pretty, pretty quickly. And as I had gotten into my 20s, I had developed very severe headaches and carpal tunnel syndrome so bad that I had to wear braces on both of my wrists. And I got diagnosed with scoliosis. I was still pre-diabetic and I still had acute anemia. So that here I am, I had two babies back to back, 13 months apart. And I had not lost the weight I gained from the first baby when I got pregnant with the second. And so my doctor just told me, don't worry about your weight. He really didn't give me guidelines for eating. So he just said, eat. So I did. <laughs> and I ended up being about 50 pounds overweight when my second child was born. And for somebody that's five foot two, that was a lot of weight. Well, when my son was born, my father was diagnosed with cancer. And I will never forget the night I was standing over my son's bed, he was one, and my sister called me and told me my father had passed away. And I had just left his bedside, and I was racing home to see the children before going back. And I looked at my son, who was one, and 
I just realized he wasn't going to see his grandchildren grow up. And he was younger than I am, and I'm 63 now. He was 62 when he died. He, he didn't get to see our, his grandchildren grow up. And it occurred to me we were all going to the doctor, doing exactly what we were supposed to, taking what we were prescribed, but no one seemed to be getting well. And I wasn't getting well. And here I had two children at home and I wanted to raise him and I wanted to live and be healthy enough to enjoy my grandchildren. And it was about this time that my own gynecologist died of cancer. And I'm just looking at this big picture and I'm thinking, this, this really isn't working. There's something wrong here. I'm going to try something new. So I hired a new doctor, Dr. Jean Goss, who was just fabulous. And I told her, I said, I'm doing a new program. I'm going to use food as my medicine. <laughs> and I would just want you to take my blood once a year and tell me where I am. Because when I told people I was going to be a vegetarian and I was this person who had had an anemia all my life, I had to wear a bracelet that said uh, allergic to penicillin because uh, my mother was so afraid if I had gotten in an accident, you know, that's the first thing they'd give me and she thought it would kill me. And so I, uh, she said, Nancy, I did not learn anything about nutrition in medical school. So, you know, I'll certainly support you in this journey and we'll see what happens. And I, and I kind of said the same thing to my pediatrician. And it was about this time I got Life magazine and it had a very intensive, long, in-depth article on the new farming practices about how they were raising animals in these confined buildings that had no fresh air, no uh, sunshine, uh, no grass, no, no natural environment. And it was, they were giving them hormones to fatten them up faster. And because of the conditions being so unhealthy, they were having to give them lots of antibiotics in order just to keep them alive long enough for them to kill them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then had these huge graphic pictures of these sweet little animals being treated just like they weren't even living beings. Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge animal lover from, I think from birth, I just, I'm certified licensed wildlife rehabilitator now. But I just, I put down that article, I was so horrified by it, and I turned to my husband and I just said, I can't participate in this anymore, and I'm going to be vegetarian, I'm going to raise the children this way, and he said, okay. So I started in this journey using food as my medicine, switching to a plant-based diet, and I just had the doctors kind of working with me there. And at this time, I started learning about GMOs and how, and this was 30 years ago, yeah. I was learning about GMOs and how the flowers in the plants have no nectar. I don't know if you've ever noticed that when you go to a florist, he says, those flowers don't have any fragrance. Yeah. Well, these pollinators in our beautiful web of life, they were all dying from starvation because they weren't able to get any food from all these plants mm -hmm. and I found that so upsetting and distressful and so I started an organic garden I started growing heirloom plants I joined a seed exchange and I started making my own baby food mm -hmm. and 30 years ago there just wasn't a whole lot of choices for organic food or anything so I was just ordering from farmers I was doing the best I could well over the next year or two after I switched to this, that weight just fell off like, like it was nothing. And it was amazing because I didn't even have to try. My pre-diabetes vanished. My acute anemia, which really surprised everyone, including my doctor, disappeared. And I had my carpal tunnel syndrome went away and my headaches went away. I felt better than I had probably felt my whole life. And my pediatrician told me that I had the healthiest children he had ever seen. And so I knew that I was on the road to something. I was adding more plant-based foods to my diet. I was switching out unhealthy white refined flour for various other flours that I was researching. And, um, and now over the years, now that I'm 63, my kids are grown. I know a lot of people were worried my children would have stunted growth and be terribly unhealthy. And my son is six foot one. 
which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And they are both very healthy today. And my personal doctor, Jan, she retired about 15 years ago. And I haven't even bothered to get another doctor because I never get sick. And I never, I never need anything. And I really just went to her more because I like her and I wanted to see her. And then she really supported what I was doing. And she would send me a lot of her clients and put my, my information in her, her offices for her clients who needed nutritional counseling. And so anyway, um, yeah, I, I just never even worry or even think about getting sick or the flu or anything like that and I really do believe that it is the quality of the food that's important but also I have learned and, and through my research have found that the plant-based diet really is an excellent way to be healthy and have optimum health in your life. 